Anyway, this is where we welcome back this. to Shamrock and Tissel. Hello, everybody. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, happy. Happy New Year, Yapsi. And a Merry Christmas happy and year. Happy Hanukkah. And Merry Christmas. Moshe happy Rami holidays, or, whatever, yeah. <laughs> whatever you celebrate. Yeah. I hope it was happy a lovely time. Big booby day for me. <laughs> Happy's ultimate presence. The kids of the nation. Of the corporation. Sorry. Anyway. Oh my god. <laughs> Don't know what came up. Setting me. off the tone real good. <laughs> real setting real off good. the year um, how I wanted to finish. Oh yeah. <laughs> Start as you mean to go yeah, on. That's what I was trying to say. say and I couldn't get out of there. Yeah. <laughs> I got you. I got she you. Got that's me. fine. She got me. She got me. So... Christmas, we just had Christmas, oh, oh. me and you both celebrate Christmas to some extent. Um, did you get anything nice for Christmas? I got, um, actually, actually, new crowd this Christmas. I got a lovely, oh. like, um, bracelet and necklace off me, mama. But there was, like, a lovely, like, little, um, there was a lovely little, uh, like, letter thing that says that I've hooked this and also. La la, if you ever lonely or anything like that, now that I've hugged this and I'm hugging you or something like that. And she's like, oh, it's so cute. That's very, very, very cute. Mm. Aw. Yeah, it was really nice. Really nice. Uh, what about yourself? Um, well, my family, like, the youngest person in my, my family is 30. So we kind of decided a couple of years ago that um, we wouldn't really do gifts as such. We would just kind of, like, do scratch cards and things and whatever. So, you know, just... Just a bunch of scratch cards. I got some nice cozy socks and some chocolate. Too much chocolate, actually. Which is um, never but it was just really like, nice. Out. Try to just do um, what's that? What are they called? Secret Santas. We did try that, right? We tried that two years. Mm-hmm. Um, and my mum is a chef. Couldn't Good. quite yeah, understand. Boy is gifts. Secret Santa, and just bought everybody gifts. Typical mother. Instead of just yeah, so we we decided to scrap that and we just went for. Can't play Scratch by cards. the playing rules. But my mum even still didn't understand the right. We we picked a limit, a, a limit of scratch cards. We buy it, put it in a, a card, and then put them in a pot, and then you just grab a card out of the pot and whatever oh, that's as long cool. as it's not your own. She did it for each of us. That's not cool. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so but apart from that, Christmas was lovely. But speaking about Christmas, do you remember your first you remember? Big Christmas gift that was like a game or a console or a something like something geeky that you got as a child that was your There's Christmas gift. There's one thing that's that like, like pounding that on my head. That set the thing. It's like boom, boom, and it's not a game, but a toy, and it's from a franchise. And I even if I asked you to guess, you would never guess the franchise because it's so random. It's a sci-fi cop franchise. Robocop. <laughs> yes. Really? I got a oh, Robocop I and like... I got Robocop and the car. And it was literally the best present I've ever got. And I was like mm, 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 mm. I was like used to I'd be so annoying. I put, I'd literally put in the bat, bring it into the bat. It was like my little rubber ducky and all it was my Robocop on me. Used to hoard it. But the one that I like like <laughs> that my cousins give out more <laughs> but like and like I used to be a little shit is Back in the day, Power Rangers were the hype of hype. Like, oh yeah, Power the Rangers 90s, the Power Rangers was the shit back in the day. I mean, yeah, anything Power Rangers was sold at Christmas time. Guess who wanted something Power Rangers? I guess he wanted the Power Ranger glove. This guy right here. Mm-hmm. So, my mom, that I mean, must have searched everywhere and got a glove. Now, I'm just going to ask you, what colour do you think glove I got on Christmas Day? Pink. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And you wore I it and loved it. loved it. it. I, they were so mm. worried. That, and I was just like, it was like, it was like finding the Affinity Contlet. I was like, oh. <laughs> and I, Thing is, though, let's all let's all admit the pink Power Ranger, though. Uh, rest in peace. I wish she's dead, isn't she? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Or is it the yellow one? Let's look that up. I'm pretty sure, Let us fact I'm check. I'm pretty sure it's the yellow one. Pink Power Ranger. I think she might be passed on. Or it might be... I think it's the yellow ranger. I know one of the uh, girls is dead. 100%. Kimberly Ann Hart, who played the Pink Power Ranger, 
me just double check. Is. Is. Alive. No. Breathing. Is she fat checking? I, this, it, her Wikipedia is really weird. Like, you know how it has like all just the like, she's born alive. this oh, time or ever? Can say it's still alive? Can you not type in is Pink Ranger girl woman alive? Is Pink Power Ranger actress alive? Alive. She's alive. So it's the Outer Ranger. It's the Outer Ranger. <laughs> anyway, wow. I used to okay. always, there was this like a little button in the middle and you could press it and make noises. Lob, I am telling you. When I said I must have went about eight months and I never took this glove off. I mean, this glove was made. There's literally photographs. And I'm just like standing in the middle like this with this glove. And I'm like, pew, 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 pew. And I didn't give up bollocks that it was pink. I was running around like, oh man, it was the best, best. They are my two iconic toys. And if I can ever find a, if I can ever find a photo lab, I'll just show you. I mean, the pink pair range, I love it. It's fucking brilliant. What about yourself? If you can find it and, and show and show the, the the audience, that would be even better. I won't be able to because that's <laughs> too much work. Mm-hmm. Only if they subscribe. <laughs> Subscribers will get a free happy wearing yes. a pink Power Rangers glove. There you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, I remember it very vividly, and it's one of my earliest memories. When I was four, so my fourth Christmas, I got the Sega Mega Drive. And I remember it so specifically because it came in a black box, box that yeah. had a really big Sonic on the front. Mm-hmm. And I remember just being like, who is that blue hedgehog? Like, ooh. Like when I was a kid, it, it was animated. Was I was. Back then for like the concerts were horrendous because it was such a big black box. And then the console itself is black as well. So I was like, oh, what is that? And then it was the, the big Mega Drive, I think it was like in red tint or like. Uh, no, the Mega L- Drive is like a silver font. No, but the outline was like red or something. I remember it being very reddish or something. Black and reddish. I don't know why. Uh... Oh. Can't remember, but I just I just remember seeing this big box with this blue hedgehog on it, and um, I had been familiar with the concept of playing games on the computer because my dad had a computer, and on it, well, the first game I ever played was Brick Breaker. So I understand, I understood the concept of games, but it wasn't until my dad hooked this up on the TV and I saw this blue hedgehog on the TV and I could run around as it, I was like. <gasps> This is the most amazing thing of my life. So from four, that was it. But I have a similar story uh, to your mom and dad hunting all over for a Power Rangers glove, except it was um, a couple of years later, my mom hunted everywhere for my sister and I for a Woody and Buzz from Toy Story. And they were like gold dust. And she has this... She has this funny story where she said that she was in this specific shop and like mums and dads were going around like looking everywhere for this Woody and Buzz and someone had like had a tip off or something like if you go to this shop at this time at this place whatever they'll have them there and as she said it was like it was like out of a movie this guy came out the back with this huge crate and it was like shining mm. and she said everybody jumped this poor shop worker and was scrabbling all over this guy to get these dolls and she managed to grab one like back then like no internet like there was no fucking access to the internet like there was no you were ringing you were ringing georgie from up the road going uh, Jude, you were you in the shops have you heard anything from here there would be people like you would be asking like i know trisha's son walks in smith's so i'm gonna ask her she's yeah like my family had to go up to the north and all together like some toys or some like if they wanted like I remember the struggles getting PlayStation twos and PlayStation ones. My man dad and I had to go through like mental stuff. Like it would, like it's not. As, it's like mm. everything today is like online. You can order online. It's easier. You can get it from ship it from a different place. You can get it, like you can buy it off a different person. But like everything back in the day was all word of mouth. It was like a fucking. It was like a quest. <laughs> <laughs> in its own little way. <laughs> Seek for son, I have the scroll of the PlayStation 2, but you must first give me two Power Ranger gloves and a pack of the Crips. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> it was insane back in the day. Yeah, it was it, really like, every man for themselves. And a lot of let Fair play to kids. all of our parents. Like, big shout out. 
Yeah, unreal. Big unreal. shout out to all the parents back in the day. Um, but yeah, that was it. There was the Sega Mega Drive and the the Woody and Buzz. Like that was the that was me. I was in. So that was my big Christmas gift. My first one that got me into being a big old nerd was well, Sega Mega that Sega Drive. Mega Drive. Was the Sega okay. Mega Drive? Uh, so, yeah. uh, obviously Sonic. Well, yeah, it was Sonic the Hedgehog. It was the like the Sonic the Hedgehog. That was the one, um, and I loved it. I absolutely loved it. And then, of course, Sonic the Hedgehog two came out and meant that my sister could play as Tails alongside me. So, but yeah, so good. But moving on from Christmas, we are in twenty twenty four now. Twenty twenty four, a big year. Twenty twenty four, It looks year. like it's going to be a big year. Could be a big year of disappointment. Because not, oh. let's not be let's not kid ourselves, Lub. Mm-hmm. How many game companies have lived up to the hype? I think there, I can name two studios that I will automatically I would pre-order. I would have the fate to pre-order. I have two studios only that I would ever pre-order. Okay, what are those studios? FromSoft. Okay. And Larian Studios. Agree. Absolutely agree. Now, I obviously have my own personal interest where I will pre-order from Square Enix because yeah, oh yeah, I sorry, love yeah, Final Square, Fantasy. Yeah, I actually, actually, um, and you know I'll... What? Square, you're completely right there. I don't think Square has ever left down, been a let down, ever. It, I feel with Square Enix, in particular with Final Fantasy, it's very subjective. Um, a lot of people don't always agree on Final Fantasy titles being good or whatever like a lot of people might have opinions on final fantasy 16 um saying that they didn't like it or they don't like it it's very subjective but a final fantasy is always good clean and just and a, a solid game ahead of its time when it comes to cinematics always unbelievably like it pushes unbelievably. the boundaries every time for the cinematics which I just completed Final Fantasy 16 at the weekend, and, you've and it, it it's amazing. A solid nine out of ten from me. It's one of the best cinematic experiences in gaming I think I've ever had. It's incredible. Well, it's not a Final it. Fantasy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Final Fantasy is always about them cinematic. I find 100%. I find if a, if a Final Fantasy doesn't have that huge cinematic moment in it, now it could be the start, middle, or end of the game. It's not really a Final Fantasy. There's always that one cinematic right. moment, that one scene in a Final Fantasy. Like you could go through the, the titles and name them. That's why I want to do. Much, like, we should do that now. Yeah. Right. Let's okay. start from seven. I'm gonna pick my from one from seven, seven, and you can pick your one from seven. Okay. Okay. My big, big scene has to be the big scene, and I don't want to really want to put spoilers on it. But if you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. The air scene. Oh, you went for that scene. Yes. Okay. Okay. Oh, you went for a different See, one. Okay. Yeah, for me, for Final Fantasy VII, I would say the, the end scene just after you defeat Sephiroth. The cross And the meteors and the... No, 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 no. The meteor is coming down and they're trying to get back out. And that's when the live stream, when Holy and the live stream come together to stop the meteor. That cinematic yeah, amazing. is amazing. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. But it's not even all just with Final Fantasy. It's not just those big one like cinematic scenes. It's also like the summons. The summons are each their own cinematic spectacle in their own as no, well. That's very true. Um, but, but yeah, that's but for me always, for Seven. I always think of that I don't one. know. I always have like, I feel like a Final Fantasy will always, if I play one, there will always be that like a memory connected to a cinematic for me for a game it will always be like yeah. oh like oh that, that like the next one eight, eight i think we can both agree on this the one. opening the intro the opening is will is unstoppable it's, it's what a way to kick a game off like you're hooked from the start we fast <laughs> so good and the fight between squall and and oh it's just so, so good uh a the start of a is just uh, it's probably one it's it's up there as one of my favorite starts for final fantasy it has to be it's amazing 100 percent. yeah Nine? definitely Nine for me is the end with the theater and garnet is all dressed up and oh, that when she turns into the dagger? They think that 
no, 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 that the end and they think that Zidane is gone and he all of a sudden appears in the crowd and you just see her, the camera's following yeah. her, she's running through the castle, she's running out into the crowd and they get reunited. That scene for me, that's Final Fantasy IX. Iron that is one. the woods, is when the, the oh. woods starts to petrify and they're about running through mm. it and, and uh, I forget his name, bandana around his eyes. Yeah, runs, I forget his runs, name as well. It's been a while since he played And he just throws it. And you kind of get, you can kind of feel it like he's like gives them like a, like a thumbs up to get out, of, bounces, and ah, oh, it's so good. And Zidane picks it up and starts running run like a lunatic. It's fucking brilliant. So good. So good. Final Fantasy Ten. Here's where here's where it starts getting hard. Ten is full. Fallen. Ten is full. But I don't think anyone can argue against the sending that Yuna does oh. on the water. So good. that scene is beautiful it's just so poignant and beautiful and it just sets the tone for the game it really does oh 10 is a treat, treat. 10 is an absolute treat my one i i'm gonna try i'm gonna try, i is when they storm the wedding oh yes and they come down yeah. on the zip lines yeah, the zip oh lines. so good so fucking cool i was trying to go so different good. something different it was either that one or it's the the when um uh, titus and the uh, unar and the like See that one? Oh, and they the, they smooch. And you smooch. Oh. Or that <laughs> the, the laughter of the so funny. That's it. That's not really a yeah, cinematic no, though. It's that's in game. Yeah. It's a funny moment though for me. Okay, Final Fantasy. Uh, let's just skip to thirteen. Uh, I can't. I can't. I have not actually. Okay, so skip to fourteen. Really played through thirteen. Uh, haven't really played through fourteen. I we've skipped twelve though, I and I played have it. played through all of twelve. Um. I have, and honestly, the only one I can think wow, of. Wow, love! Just wow. Is... I was skipping the ones that I've played because you haven't played because. But but the two... you don't want to spoil. No, just just for curiosity, like you know, what I mean? just for like. Ah, uh, well, I'm not gonna say my favorite bit because like she hasn't played hers. Like jump in, and then no, I play twelve. Let's let me say my bit. Yeah, I was gonna say for twelve. I actually really can't think of one. I can only really think of one, and it's whatever. Like, but that's my opinion on twelve. I have played twelve. <laughs> 12 is, that's all I was gonna say. 12, uh, so it alerted me. Twelve did. So fifteen. We both played fifteen. Oh, there's a lot of big. Mounts. Fifteen was full. Fifteen was full. Um, but there's one that really sticks. I kind of hope you say me. one so I can say the other. <laughs> okay, so the one that sticks out for me for fifteen was the end with Ifrit entering, and then all of a sudden Shiva reveals herself. And there's that awesome big yes, fight yes. then. But connecting to that at the end, and it always makes me well up and cry. I'm actually like getting upset thinking about it now. Is when Noctis walks in and he turns back to them and all his friends, like everyone's standing and starting to fight, and he just tells them, Walk tall, my friends. Yeah. <gasps> oh, that's my a great, God. Uh, Noct- my heart. I don't know why. I feel like. Fit didn't get shit on because it's like a boy band thing, but what a band of brothers there! Fuck me, it's Amazing. really cool. Um, I was gonna say Ifrit as well. Uh, but I will have to say Leviathan. Oh yes, the Leviathan, Leviathan is what a fucking fight and cinematic that is. That's in. Um, okay, I've never been so angry at a summon in my life. <laughs> oh, it's so good! It's fucking so good. amazing. And then I can't say anything about 16 because I haven't played it. And I won't say a word. I am so protective. I don't want you to get spoiled I because haven't. it's so, so I'll good and I know that you'll enjoy it. The thing is, I haven't. There's not been any really spo- I, I literally know nothing about it. I, I will. Don't, I won't lie. I don't will. because... All I know is Cloyd's Ifra. There's Lovely who's Phoenix. So I'm basically... Here's what I think is the story. Can I just tell you what? Okay, yeah, sure. Absolutely, go on. Here's what I think the story is. Each nation has their own summon and is and they're capsuled into a person. They're like the vest. They're like the they hold the key. Like that, that's their protective weapon. Each nation has their own protective nation, who usually becomes the ruler of that land. So like he, he doesn't know he's a free or something like that, but he's a protector of Phoenix or something. Something happens or something like that with the Phoenix boy. Someone's trying to rob Phoenix or something from their land or something. Some reason they have two in their land or something like that, and he's trying to save them or something. That's what I think. Okay. 
<laughs> Am I horrendously wrong? You're not. You have like not even one percent of what's going on in that story. Okay, that's good. It's going to blow your mind. I can't wait for you to play it. I really can't wait for you to play but it. Well, am I right about the um, summons being like things? Uh, ish. Ish. Okay. Ish. Yes. Yes, but also a little bit no. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. I can't wait to play. I will get to so, so definitely good. play. Um, Speaking about can't wait to play. Oh, I like this. Games. Games. games that are coming out in 2024. Let's have a look at the year ahead. So it is 2024. And there are a whole new year of games for us to enjoy. So well, why not let go through this list that we have here and pick out the ones that are coming out that really tickle our fancy and, and are perhaps are quite hyped and look forward to throughout the year. First um, one's on starting, Android. Of course, <laughs> let's not talk about that one. <laughs> Pardon? The first one's on Android. Let's not talk about that one. <laughs> no, 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 no. Let's, let's go through January. So January, for me, the big game coming out in January... Is Tekken 8. Oh, I didn't even look at it. Yes, Tekken 8. Yeah, 100%. I can't wait. I can't wait. I have it on pre order and I'm very much looking forward Tekken to it. Tekken 8 is um, going to be a D shit. Our very, very close friends, Clockwork and Jolly, are huge Tekken heads, and um, we're possibly be going going to be doing another Tekken tournament. Look. We had done this previously on Twitch on Gaz's channel. Shout out to, to Gaz. Um, but yeah, I'm really looking forward to Tekken. Tekken is cool. Uh, like a dragon is that no like a dragon so that's what they're calling it now like a dragon is like a dragon is the new um yakuza games yes so he literally took it so i think it's because- a specific one like it's a specific no i think it's because you don't want to popularize the yakuza gang anymore lobby is that what it is? Yeah, I think that's what it is. Ooh, okay. I think it's controversial. I really do think that's why they changed the name. Makes no sense why they would change the name. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you, yeah, that makes sense. Because is, they don't want to be, they don't want the game and stuff to be kind of recognized in diplomatically shit like that. Do you want to move on to February? Um, February. Did you see Kaisen fighter game? Another fighter game. I'm actually intrigued about Suicide Squad. Oh, okay. The new Suicide Squad game? I think it will be a kill. Like, not on my own. I think if you got it or someone else got it and we play it together, I think it'd be just fun. It's like like a fun game to just superly play around with. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't think... Something I think it's, it's like, what, what kind of... It's just like a party, a party animal kind of game, but it's like with Marvel characters and all. I think it'd be super fun. I don't think... Uh, hopefully, it doesn't take itself too serious. And it just, it's one of them things. Hmm. So that is Suicide Squad Killed the Justice League coming out on February 2nd hmm. for PS5, Xbox Series, and PC. Yeah, I guess. Nice. There is only one game in February oh, yes, yeah, coming yeah, out that know. I care about. Five, five, we all know it's Final oh, Fantasy VII Rebirth. Rebirth. Yes, we know, we know. And it's coming out on February 29th because this is a leap year. And that is coming out for the PS5. The last... Do you think they did that on purpose because of some reason? No, damn, they probably did. Some kind of special day, maybe. Yeah, something like that. It only comes around sometimes a day. Kind of, it'd be something wacky, you know, square. Annex. Maybe. Oh, Skull and Bones has finally come now. Holy fuck! Okay. Skull and Bones is that pirate game by uh, Assassin's Creed. What they call again? Um, Ubisoft. Ubisoft, I think. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's Ubisoft. But it's been delayed. Yeah, it is Ubisoft. It's been. It actually has been delayed like for two years because the playtest people just said it was shy. And so they just redid it. Oh, really? Just, just straight up? Yeah, it's boring. It's, uh, it's brutal. We don't. We already have a game like this. Why do we need another one? So they actually went there. Classic the, Ubisoft. But before, <laughs> before, the, before they released it, they went. They were, supposedly went back and redid the whole game. Well, good on them. Good so, on them. I won't buy and we'll release. See. I will watch people <laughs> buy and release, and then I will. Definitely, I'll, definitely. I'll. Moving on to March. Let's have a look at March. March. I don't. Oh, the South Park game definitely beginner. Snow. Dragons Day. Dogma Two. South Park game. I'm actually <laughs> knowing that the South Park game is out. I'm actually more hyped about that than I am Dragon Dogma Two. Really, I've never played any Love, of these South you've Park games. You've never played. Uh, uh, Fracture Boho? No. 
Thing is, though, South Park is not my thing. I did not watch a South Park episode until I was 15, Lab. 16 years old. You need to play the South Park games because they're actually amazing. Like, it's, it's, the, it's an RPG, and it's like they're all the wizards and stuff like that, but like, it's actually really good turn base. Like, it's, really? a, it's surprisingly how good it is. Like, I was addicted to it. Okay, okay. I'll take your word for I'm it. I'm you, Lab. It's a ball. There is a funny thing that the developers did, and I think it shocked everyone who played it. There's, there's loads of clips on it. The difficulty rating, so how hard the game is, yeah. is based on your skin color. So the whiter you are, the easier the <sighs> game is, and the way people treat you better. And the darker your skin the color is, <laughs> the people did like kind of disrespect you a bit more and things cost more <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah, okay it's fucking mad oh. madness i don't know how to get away oh. with things like that but fuck me no alone no. in the dark is the game with your man from stranger things um the sheriff david harbour david harbour is the, he's the protagonist in alone in the dark okay yeah it looks really good it looks like that Silent Hill, Hill kind of, if you like that stuff. It's the remake of Alan and Eric. Perfect. Okay, that's coming out to on PS5, Xbox Series, and PC on March 20th. And then Dragon Dogma 2, which is Dragon looks Dogma. so class. Two days later on March 22nd for PS5, Xbox, and PC. It looks class. Uh, I still need to play one. Yes. I really want to play one. It's just a game that's just slipped by me. Yeah. It's not like I've not wanted to play it. I have. It's just slipped by all this it's all not this time. that i didn't want it it's i'm not gonna lie if it was made by let's say square enix or something i probably would have played it it's because there was a big capcom and i was like well capcom is like uh they're fire games like do you know what i mean it's like it's just gonna be car it's just gonna be combat orientated it's not gonna be no story to it do you know what i mean it's, it's just gonna be born like it's just gonna be like a fighter and i've seen so many trailers now that i'm horribly wrong it looks amazing it looks like it looks incredible something to look forward yeah. to in march they've put a lot into it um now the rest of the year seems a little bit sparse oh, yeah. until about um it doesn't towards the end of the yeah. year we've got black myth wukong in august on august 20th a lot of games still don't have their dates they're to yeah. be announced dates set and i i'm not sure if it's perhaps companies are waiting to decide which financial yeah. quarter to sell them in um but there are a lot more games coming out this year so it'll be another jam-packed game um, a year for gaming um it should be a good one we've got the warhammer 40k space marine 2, 2 coming out september cost. 9th so that should be really good. But that's all the confirmed dates, at least, for, for the upcoming months. So, um, let's talk about, we're talking about gaming. You know? We want to talk about uh, the old animal. Yes, let's move In on to anime. So, which, anime. Which I, I'm current. Oh, go sorry, go what ahead. On? I'm just saying that I'm currently still making my way through Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2. Um, it, the joys of trying to coordinate watching something together as an adult with someone else um, means that you don't quite finish it as quickly as you maybe could on your own, but never mind. It's, it's uh, from experience. So, but I yeah. think oh, we talked about um, we talked about games of our last last year. What was your anime of the last year? Ooh, my anime of last year? Um... Honestly, I'm probably going to say Spy Family. Like when oh, we watched Spy, Spy Family, Family yeah. last year, Spy that Family. was really it was a really fun anime. Mm. It's really really cute. It's really mine, fun. Um uh mine will be Cyberpunk. Was that last yeah. year? Was Edge that 2023? Edge was it? Pretty sure I remember. Oh my god, where is the time going? 2022. I was not sure that was last year. Nope. <laughs> I was like, whoa, that feels like much, much longer ago. No, 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 that was 2022. Well, I, oh, well, I didn't watch until last year. <laughs> so, <laughs> I watched it last year. We watched it together. Yeah, last year. We didn't watch it on release. It was, Close enough. It was, it was the release of September. I think we did watch it just uh, um, before Christmas. 
because I think we'd watched half of it and then I think I can remember asking you like can we set a date to watch the rest of oh, it no, before no, I go we down for Christmas we need to watch the whole fucking thing in one sitting yeah but almost but we didn't and then I had to be like right come on when are we watching these last few episodes we did watch a lot of them but we didn't watch it all not on the okay, one sitting well it was really shit I thought I watched it well if it's not that it's Blue Eyes Summer oh yes Blue Absolutely. Is my anime of the year Blue Eyed Samurai, Absolutely. anime of the year. I, yeah, let me think. Yep. No, let me think. Yep. Let me think. Yep. No. Yeah, definitely. I really think. I'm trying to think. Is there anything else I watched? I actually didn't watch. I need to watch that. Watch more anime. It's them. actually like pinning down and saying like, right tonight, I'm gonna watch mm. this, and I'm gonna watch this many episodes or whatever. Like, I'm all, I'm I I actually had a, like a fleeting thought while I was away down at my mum's for Christmas. I'm really tempted to set up like an anime club almost, and set like a date where like every week, regardless of who else wants to show up, I will be going into Discord and I will be watching this anime. And if you want to come and watch it when you're free that time, or if you're not, oh, that's cool. then that's fine. So I'm thinking of maybe doing an anime club. Anime, anime club. club to be confirmed. To be confirmed. To com- we'll, we'll pin down the pin down the details and we'll let you know. To be confirmed. Anime club. Um, 2020. Oh, well, yeah, I, yeah. Blue White Samurai because I really enjoyed that. It was amazing. And I liked the way everything kind Absolutely of fantastic. Inter- tor- intertwined. Um, I loved My Hero. It was not a good show. Season. Yes. The, the latest season. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else. Anything else? I actually watched a lot of One Piece this year, last year, which is like uh, yeah. I was like, uh, no, but I got I started watching. Uh, Same. One Piece. It was last year. I started watching One Piece as well, and I have not gotten as far as I maybe would have liked. But um, I've got uh, my. I started. I'm a few episodes in. I'm a few. No, <laughs> I haven't. We haven't crossed the threshold of uh, um, an avid watcher. Let's say there's so many I am... episodes. I'm like 150. Yeah, I'm, I'm like somewhere 100 around well. 150. It's crazy that you watch 150 and it's literally nothing of the anime. Just the tip of it's the iceberg. Just the tip of the iceberg. Like, what crazy. a crazy anime. Um, Lob, I'm looking at this list and I haven't, I can't see anything. Scroll down. Scroll down. <gasps> go find where it says winter 2024. Up. There you go. You're covered in adverts. Um, so the big anime that's apparently just come out t- two days ago that everyone's talking about is Solo Leveling. Solo Leveling. And um, I think we should do a react on this, definitely. Uh, we'll, it I will think will be, we should. It will be on the channel. Uh, Solo Leveling will react to the... Because it's one of the most hyped um, animes out there at the moment. And I'm pretty sure at the moment it's, one it's of, gaining a lot of traction. It's one of uh, the first coloured mangas. I'm pretty sure. Oh really? Yeah, I'm pretty oh, sure. I'm pretty sure okay. the manga is coloured. Now I could be wrong. Hopefully I'm not. But I'm pretty sure Solo Leveling is a coloured uh, uh, manga. I'm pretty sure I That's went cool. into a shop and I saw it. It goes coloured, and I was like, "Oh, this is kind of interesting." <gasps> Here's another one I'm looking forward to. Blue Exorcist. I fucking love Blue Exorcist. It's fucking <laughs> amazing. The movie. I've never oh, watched it. Oh, it's so good. Sam Regal's in it. Oh, really? Yeah, well, he's the he's the teacher. He's the principal of the the school. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, he's and it's like when I say the Sam Regal character, it's a Sam Regal character. Like he's fucking brilliant. Perfect. You've never I'm seen. I'm interested now. You've never seen Blue Exorcist. No. We have to watch it. I'll watch it with you. Anime club, right? We're gonna have to do this. No more to be confirmed. We need to set a date. It's make so a day every good. week. Anime club, let's go. Anime club details coming soon. <laughs> I am one hundred percent on that. Uh, on that ship, Blue X is. is, is I think it's uh, me and Jolly are the only two avid watchers. It's only the only thing is there's only one season and one movie, and now they're releasing more. And I'm just like, oh, give me. I just want more. Give me more. Mm, okay, okay. Well, that'll more. be the first anime club anime then. We've decided. We've decided. Pokemon Horizons. I'll just want to double check that one. Pokemon Horizons. That comes out on Netflix in February. Please do tell me uh, about Pokemon Horizons. So Pokemon Horizons, oh, yes, yeah. if I remember correctly. Uh, February. February of 2024. There's the... Just the new 
Pokemon anime? Is it the movie? Is it a series? Is it a trailer? Uh, it looks like it's Horizons is based off the new games. Because uh, I can see Fencoco and all that stuff on the, the, the stars. Yeah. So it must be the new island. Oh, so it's Pokemon one, fans. It's the one after Ash. Ash is gone. Ah, so that is the one after Ash. So sure. Solar will maybe be interested in that one. Oh, um, Monsters we... is something that you probably don't know about. Do you know about Monsters, the anime? I don't think I do. Show me. Monsters is a One Piece prequel about Zoro. Oh. Zoro's... I something. remember you and Jolly talking about this. Tell me more. So it's a One Piece prequel. Monsters is set, set to be released in January. On Netflix, and it's the first shop manga from Mr. Oda himself, the, uh, the creator. And I'm pretty sure it's a spin off uh, prequel to Zoro. Something to do with Zoro, anyway. Ooh, that could be good. Of a legendary swordsman, Ruma. He supposedly is something to do with Zoro. I don't know. It's much further in the anime than I am. But here is here. Monsters is called. And it's about the. Uh, oh. It's just about the one of the legendary swordsmen in One Piece, but if it's anything to do with Oda, it must be a fire, and it's called yeah. Monsters. It's out January. I'm Bring wonder, it on. I wonder if it's on YouTube. Shall we do a bit, 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 so you can see the audio, so you know where to cut. Uh, there's no really trailer out for it at the moment. There's only kind of like a little manga clippings of it, Lobby. Uh, so mm-hmm. there's no, nothing really out on it yet. But it's one to look forward to is Monsters. Uh, it's out on Netflix. Seems good. like um, Netflix are doing a lot for One Piece. Because they're, they're also... I don't know if you've heard this. They're also redoing this One Piece. I did hear about that. I saw with, on... With studios um, are redoing it. Yeah, Wit Studios are doing it. Um, I'm intrigued to see how that goes because... I love Wit. Wit Studios are. I do love them. They are absolutely fantastic. They're a great anime studio. It's just remaking One Piece's... I don't know. A little out of left field. Yeah, for something that's not finished. Mm. Why did you need to redo it? It's a little bit It's a little bit strange, but we'll see when it comes out what it's all about. Um... Looking through this list as well, we've got that time I got reincarnated as a slime. Season three coming out. I April need to watch it. Everyone says that is really good. I haven't watched. And I need to watch it. I've heard about. Liam it. sent it to me. He was like, "You need to watch this," and I was like, "Oh yeah, okay." Again. Oh, like the, you know. what's the story? Is I was reincarnated as the Seven Prince. As reincarnated as I used my appraisal uh, skill. <laughs> now, Lob. Reincarnation. Lob, here's a question for you. Mm-hmm. Do you ever see mangas and they have huge, like, long-ass names? Yeah. Do you know why? No, I don't. Do you know, Do like, you? you're like, uh, the day I went into the judges and I found, I found love with the girl who's going to kill me, blah, 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 is mm-hmm. the name. Do you know why? Do you want to take a guess, boy? Is it just the, the English translation? No. Uh, like, no, something in Japanese, no? it's the exact same. Hmm. I don't know. You're gonna have to tell me. I have no idea. The competition in Japan for manga artists is horrendously big. So on the on the side binder of a manga, instead of people looking at the back of mangas, they know exactly what the story is by just looking at the at the, the side binder, and they'll take that book then. So when people are looking through shelves, they will literally know what the sto- the synopsis of the story is by like the side binder. Because of the name of the show. So by the spine of the manga yeah. itself. They would know the wow. name. They would know the synopsis and what, what to look forward to in the show without even looking at the back. So it saves them time to look around. It's being more efficient. Interesting. So when they're looking around, they go, oh, uh, I found love in the dungeon. Go, oh, that's well, I know this is about a dungeon and a man falling in love with a girl. Like, you know what I mean? I'm taking this book. Oh, okay. So it's just... Literally, like, the back of a, um, a manga is a longer synopsis. It, the, now the name, they're using the name to advertise it more, which is kind of cool. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I can. That's a happy tip there, face. I can understand it. Yeah, there you go. Happy. There you go, everybody. A happy knowledge there, face. Uh, 
We also have coming out in the spring of 2024, new Demon Slayer, the Hashira oh, training. Yeah. Hashira. I just had to oh. finish literally like a four episodes off. The swordsmith are, oh I'm man, you are at like, you're at the, the, the episode where it really yeah. kicks off. Like the swordsmith arc is fantastic. The animation it really is so fucking next level. I get that people may not like Demon Slayer or aren't as into it. I don't like the like the the cast, like the, the main protagonist in it. You've said this before. You, you just, don't like I just don't like them. The three. Yeah. I think they're absolutely like boring as fuck. I just, Compared to some of the other characters in it. The yes, the the, the, the bad guys are that. so much better. Like so much better. The only reason I watch it is for the evil guys, like it's just like it's just I don't understand. I don't know. It's like they prolong the evil guys' deaths and give them more backstory than they do the main cast. Like, why are you trying to me to get me to like the the evil guys more than the main cast? Like, Jim, you know I mean? it's just like, huh? I think it's there to remind you that all these demons were once humans. It's not. I, you know what? I also think it is, love. It's because it's and it's no fault to anyone. Uh, is because the manga is very short and they're trying to prolong the anime. They make yeah, more yeah, I... moo And when and in doing that, you're fucking up the whole vibe and whole balance of the story itself, you know what I mean? Because if mm-hmm. you're prolonging some parts, people are going to be forgetting about the other parts, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And you're not giving them the chances to grow because you're having a fight that's lasting six episodes. And then you forget about your man who's always like horny for girls and why is he fucking always asleep? And then the fella who just goes berserk all the time. Um, yeah. It's just like, yeah. I get you. I get you. you kind of but there's interest. no denying. Oh, the animation. There's no denying is, that the, yeah, the animation is. It's unbelievable. It's spectacular. Yeah, it's fucking, it's spectacular. If it was based on just the animation, it's the best anime ever created in here. The animation is just so simple. It, it's next level. It's, it really it's is. It's just like... Next. Oh, no, I'm saying next on this list. Like, we could talk about Demon yeah, Slayer yeah, and its own podcast. But um, next on the list of things coming out this year, we have My Hero Academia Season 7 coming out on May the 4th. I need to catch up. <laughs> oh, my God. That last season. I haven't like, the last season. Like, season... So, season 6... Season 6 is where really I Really picked it it picked it back up for me because season five, I was starting to be like, I don't know anymore. Like it's kind of dropping off for me at season six comes back with a punch. Like it really, well, you need to, you need to watch. I it. started to slow down on it as well uh, because I was like, all right, they're going through these world is ass and things as students and they're surviving. Why are they going back to school for? Like, you know what I mean? Mm. Like they're training for these huge moments. And they're living even worse ones. We haven't had a disaster like this in the last 25 years. And they've literally... Um, oh, a time to go back to school. <laughs> He's already... Oh, yeah. Let's learn about more stuff. <laughs> like, what else you have to learn? You're living it, lad. Like, you know what I mean? Just be a hero. Like, what is the skill thing got to do with anymore? Like, after season six, if they're still in skill, I'm going to go fucking ballistic. <laughs> finish season six yeah, that's all i'm gonna I, say I on that it, yeah. <laughs> i'm gonna say on that there's also a my hero academia film coming out in the summer um in japan when it's going to be released in the west is still undecided i think the it's west. still to be announced uh my hero um, films class they actually so do, good. they actually do a really well films i'd say they are very very good and they tie in nicely with the story but like they're nice on their own as well they really really are um, but yeah, it looks like it's a good year for anime. It's a good year for games. Um, and it's also a really good year for TV shows as well for 2024. TV shows? Uh, did I give you the link there, Happy? No. There you go. TV shows in 2024 are popping. We got some big hitters this coming out this year. You should give me a... Oh, yeah, we did. We did, we did, we did, we did. Oh, yes. We have some big ones. One that I'm like... This, for me, I don't know if it's because I don't watch a lot of, air quotes, normal TV anymore. I never saw that much advertisement for Halo. They're saying Halo Season 2 is coming out this year uh, on February on Paramount+. Plus. I completely missed when Season 1 came yeah, out. Yeah, uh, wait, what? Season 2? Was Season 1 yeah, yeah, yeah. good? <laughs> wait, what? 
It must be a good scene. Apparently, it, it was a mixed reception, which I'm really surprised there wasn't more hullabaloo about it because it's Halo. It's Xbox's, you know, centerpiece. Yeah, but it's also Paramount, and when has like when has anything good come from Paramount? Yeah, like, um, I haven't heard anything good about Paramount. All, all the different um, streaming services now, I think, are really killing a lot of these shows. Well, like when it was just the one or two, it wasn't so bad. But now there's so many, and you've got to subscribe to each one, and they're each, they're each getting greedier, and raising the prices and all that kind of stuff. But that's a whole other situation. Yeah, that's that's a whole other thing. Companies selling the rights and be like, oh shit, we never thought that TV yeah. shows would pop off like this. And then Netflix yeah. just came and went, you know what, let's just make TV shows good. Scroll back up to Halo there and then scroll down one there, Happy. Yes, Look there. Uh, Avatar. Now, there's a lot riding on this because it's oh, been yes. done before badly. <laughs> M. Night, M. Night Sham Lam Lammy did it wrongy, wrongy, <laughs> wrongy. Um, it did uh, horrible. But the casting for this. Look at that. It's casting is. It's got me interested. It. I just the only casting I don't like is Ang himself. Oh really? I don't. I don't know. It just doesn't feel like Ang. Do you know what I mean? I don't know. Maybe it's just I'm not over. Like I also said that when I um when I saw the One Piece, I didn't like your man the Lumpfle, and then I watched it and I was like, oh no, he's actually a fucking amazing Luffy. Yeah, Luffy. I was like, no, actually, he's amazing. So maybe I just have to watch him uh, walk. But the cast so far, oh my god, seems brilliant. And Avatar's not that hard to do, as in like from I like uh, to translate over to live action. It's not that like ain't that hard. It's only a bit of fire, a bit of wind, a bit of earth bending. Ain't that hard? Like the, this is coming from someone who is a trained v- VFX artist. Um, I'm a junior, so, a junior compositor, so I know my shit. He kind of knows what he's talking about, but I mean that attempt, that last attempt, would kind of disprove that statement of it's not that hard. <laughs> well, it's it's when people try to put their own spin on it. Lab, that's that was what the other one was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The next on this list that's got my attention that I'm like, mm, I might quite like to watch that is Fallout. I. I, if I, I, it looks great. It does look I mean, so good. It premieres on Prime Video on April 12th. And the actor that has me like, all right, okay, is Walton Goggins. Is that He's that, the, he was the, the skull faced yeah. person. Like, He's... he is a great character actor. Um, so the fact that they've managed to pull him in, it looks I'm great. interested to see what they do with it. It looks great. It could be amazing. It could be horrendous. It, it also could be. could be great. There is murder about it, though, with the fans. Oh, really? So, I don't know if you know about Fallout, Lobby. Yeah. Not too much. I tried Fallout 4, and I couldn't get into it. Plus, I got really bad seasickness, so I just I just gave up with it. So, no, I'm not from. So, Fallout familiar. is about, basically, there's a Fallout, a atomic bomb goes off, blah, blah, blah. People live in vaults, vault 101, 102, blah, 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 around the oak. To keep them, mm-hmm. so that's her. There's an image of her like waving her hand. She's coming out of a vault mm-hmm. to see what's actually going on in the world. She's probably in there, like she probably was born in that vault. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So there's a little bit of like keep the key. So all the vaults are always about keeping everything out. Now there is a scene where she's getting interviewed by a cyclops inside the vault, and people are like, "Okay, wait." How's there a cyclops in the vault? They're supposed to be completely separated from that world. Do you know what I mean? It's supposed to be a cocoon of the humans. Like, the last mm. one. Why is there a cyclops in there? Like, makes no sense. He shouldn't be in there. He should be mm. outside, not inside. He might be a friendly cyclops. No, because, like, Who you're not. Like, the the vault is, vaults don't open, love. It's only a rare they occasion. Found a, in they a found game. a friendly cyclops and then just adopted <laughs> no, him. I don't yeah, know. You, you can't just, like, <laughs> <laughs> we just you know, let's just risk everything for this one friendly cyclops man that's the only problem people are having because it's not law, law pacific mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> go on then or arcane too yeah you go on arcane <laughs> yeah, letting you talk arcane season two i can't wait for it 
Warwick is going to be in it. I think there's going to be a lot more. I think it's going to be more grittier than that came one. I think Orgot's going to be in it. I think there's going to be a lot of fan favourites going to be in Arcane Season 2. I think they're going to... I kind of hope... What I hope is the end Jinx's story here. And then they pick... Then, like, let's say... This is the Arcane story of League of Legends. And then they go to a different part of the League of Legends world to do their another another part of it, like Jim. Mm-hmm. It's like so like let's say they do for, um pill oh no, this is Piltover. Like let's say they do one of the other Rune Terra fucking um places which would be fucking kill cool, like Noxus and shit like that. So Happy and myself we watched with our friends uh the first season of Arcane together. Um oh, really? now I, at that time, had never played League of Legends. I had only, like, kind of briefly watched the guys play it and had no idea what was happening. But I loved Arcane Season 1. I thought it was great. Of course. Now, going into Arcane Season 2, I have played League of Legends. Shun, I know, I know, but um, I ha- I'm not super into it. But I have a better idea of, like, Champions. who's who and the, the kind of, like, the vibe a little bit. Minus the the community that play, I'm talking about the characters and the in game lore. <laughs> so I'm really looking forward to season two. Um, I hope that it will be as dark and gritty as some of the new characters' backstories are in the lore. Some of that shit is real dark. dark, but it's also also put. I think Arcane is the first first CG, I like um animation to pop. Like, really pop off. Like, your CG, proper CG, CG models and stuff really popping off. Like, even better than most, like, hand-drawn. And I think this is the first time that CG is on level with hand-drawn animation. Is Arcane. And that's a big statement. Okay. That is a big statement. That is a really big statement. I think it was fucking beautiful. I think some of the scenes... Absolutely. I think the scene where um, Jinx and fucking Echo are fighting... Fuck me, that blew me away. Like that whole fight, fucking hell. I think it really. Um, I don't think. I don't think we get blue white samurai if it's not for Arkane. I think it's potentially helped to revive faith that there is an yes. audience for CGI. Um, no, I think. Shows. I think it just revived faith that CG can work. Yes, if done well, it can work. Yes. It can absolutely work. It's that's the thing. That's the crux. If animation is done well and the story and everything, alt- much like a movie, like a movie can be crap. Um, it, it just, it all has to tie in. And I feel like a lot of animation projects that were worked on in the past, it's like a lot of people saw animation and they thought children. Yeah. No. Those children that grew up with animation still love animation. Mm-hmm. Me and you, our age group, we're all still here. We still love it. To have adult animation likes the like the, of Arcane, yes, there is an audience for it. We're here. Give us more. Gib, gib, please. Give us more. Gib, 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 gib. Give us more. Gib, 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 gib. Absolutely. Then we've got Agatha, the Darkhold Diaries. I'm not going to lie, Lab. I couldn't give two rats fucks <laughs> about anything that Marvel. Is- that is coming out in in the autumn. And uh, you know uh, what? It can come out and not be watched by me. Um, I I'm a bit like that with MCU stuff. I I watched Loki. I watched season two. That was really good, but I don't. I they, just, I just it's don't fallen care. off a little bit for me. It's it really just, has. It's fallen they off just a little went, bit. Oh well, we're cool. Let's just do everything. And they just <laughs> oh, quality over quantity. Oh no, quantity over quality. That's the one. That's the one. Um, so we'll, we'll move on from that Don't one give a bollocks about you love <laughs> the MCU Ooh. is getting much from us yeah the penguin mm, yes the penguin is on Max what the fuck is Max uh, I think it's um, in America they had HBO Max and I think they have oh this would be split. cool I think so it's the Gotham's Oswald Cobblepot Colin Farrell and oh. it's gonna be his story we went to see the, that Batman movie in the cinema. The the best. Colin Farrell as Penguin? So good. Wow. Best Batman wow. film ever. I loved it. I felt like it was like the first time they've got Batman right. 
Like as a, as a detective. Like Batman's always been a detective. And I don't think they've ever really shown that in any other films other than this Batman. When he goes into the crime scene and he starts solving stuff and all, it's fucking brilliant. Mm. Mm-hmm. It was fantastic. Now, if you have not seen Robert Pattinson as Batman do it, Robert Pattinson as Bruce Wayne, we'll have another conversation about that. But Batman is... That's the thing. Real. I don't think they've ever got it right where they, it's been a good Bruce Wayne and a good Batman in one act. It's always one or the other. I feel like one hundred percent. I feel like, and I feel that I feel that's also true for um, some other um, superheroes as well in different franchises. I think the one that most people can agree on was nailed in both aspects is Iron Man. Iron Man, Robert yeah, Downey yeah, Jr. Perfect, Iron Man perfect. in and out of the suit, amazing. Well, so well, good. well, so so good. Tobey Maguire was a great Peter Parker. Uh, Andrew Garfield was a great Superman. And I think Tom Holland... Spider-Man. Or Spider-Man, sorry. <laughs> Spider-Man. Spider-Man. And I think Tom Holland is a great bow. Yes. I think he nailed bow. Yes. Definitely. Definitely. Um, but that's that's Penguin, which is coming out late 2024. It has not been 100% confirmed, but late 2024. Right. So probably around Halloween time, something like that. But moving down a little bit more, Happy. Scroll down a little bit more. A little bit. No, you went past it. You went way past it. There you go. I've watched season one, so. Is <gasps> all you? Happy, you need to watch season one. House of the Dragon season two comes out in the summer on HBO and Max. Season one is fantastic, Happy. It is really good. Yeah, but I know what um, happens. <laughs> um, Wait, you I need to watch I it. I don't though. like oh, some prequels. I just, oh, I don't know. The prequels are just literally directly before the story are just like oh in my eyes. Jimmy. See, I love a prequel because um depending obviously, but I love learning how we got here. Like we heard about it, they talked about it in the show and in the story, like that we we heard about um that Jamie was a, a Kingslayer. Yeah. But to actually see the events that unfolded that led to those things happening and the way that they're doing it. Yeah, but I, I'm not. It's... Don't I'm saying don't sleep on it. Don't sleep on the show. I give it a chance. Yeah, give it a chance. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I haven't got a clue. Happy is very stubborn. You actually need to physically grab him, sit him down, like clockwork orange style. Open his eyes and be like, "You must watch this <laughs> for him to watch something." Oh, um, I'm sort of being but no. by something. But you love Game of Thrones. I do like Game of Thrones. Yeah, well, I love Game of Thrones. Mm, okay then okay well i'm looking forward to house of the dragon season two coming out in the summer moving on from that (laughs) the next thing on my list list that i wouldn't say i'm necessarily looking forward to it i'm a bit like "Mm," because after season one i was a little bit like "Mm," uh is a the lord of the rings the rings of power still have much (laughs) now that's one that i'm a little bit like they hyped that up. Now, we know that Lord of the Rings, like the movies, are oh, okay. po- potentially some of the best movies in the world. Best piece of ever. media, nearly. I've ever created. And the amount of money that they put into this. Yeah, but it's so hard to do anything in Lord of the Rings because they can't do lots on Lord of the Rings. Do you understand? It's There's so much, like, if they were allowed to do Tolkien's work properly, and they were allowed free range of it, I'd say they could do unbelievable work like. But there's so much copyright like the like the token and say are supposedly have like like no you're not allowed to talk about that. No you're not allowed to talk about that. Like mm. there's a scene it's his in, son, I believe, his son or his grandson or someone yeah, who has like the rights. It has the the rights to it and he's very um Like there's a part not in, willing to share as much. There's a part in the hobby where Gandalf meets Radagas. And then, he's, then they go and he starts talking about Radagast. And he goes, oh, yes, there's another wizard. Um, oh, I forget his name. He has to say that because he can't mention your man's name because it's copyright. That's silly. You know That's I mean? really silly. And canonically, that is just, it's quite, like, preposterous to think that Gandalf, Gandalf would forget another fellow wizard's yeah, name. Yeah, like, like, if you think about it, that's quite a weird, he's like, weird he's like, thing. Oh, I don't remember his name. And he's like... Uh, what well, they go on then? It's like the three of us, but the other, the other, the third one, his name has eluded me or something like that. 
Yeah. It's yeah, it's fucking nuts. It's all because of copyright. You can't he, he's not legally allowed to say it like. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah. That's really weird. So when you have like when you're trying to do a story and you're you're also trying to do tiptoe around telling the story, very hard to do the mm. story, like you know what I mean? Yeah, I get you. I get you. But the the Rings of Power on Amazon, the first season, I watched it, but I felt like I kind of forced myself to finish it. Oh, really? Um, there were some elements to it that were really, really excellent. Don't get me wrong. But then there were some elements where they just felt they they just fell short. They fell a bit short, and it 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 didn't look like something that had been had that much money spent on it oh, if you understand shit. what i'm trying to say that's kind of what it came across and there's a really good meme that someone made of a picture of the guy from the army in rings of power mm-hmm. and then it takes a picture of boromir in his full gondor armor and it says this one had this budget and this one had this budget and this is this army at its worst yeah, it's and just, this is this army at its best yeah. And it just looks terrible, and it does. It really, it just looks cheap. It looks costumey. It doesn't look like. Well, I, don't, armor. I haven't watched this. I don't know how much CG they actually put into Rings of Power. Would be interesting to 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 get your opinion on it. Um, I don't know how many with, with you knowing what you know. I wonder how much practical is actually in Rings of Power because Lord of Rings. The reason why Lord of Rings and Jurassic Park One are timeless, practical, is because practical effects. And it's so good, even though you it's probably a lot more expensive and a lot more difficult. It's actually it's a lot more CG. dangerous to use practical. Yeah. Then, like the T Rex in Jurassic Park, used to automatically move and could, like need chomp, like need killed someone in its jaws before, wow. because the, the the water would get into the electricity and the mouth would clamp down, and then there was like a time when the person was trying to fix it. Imagine they're going into the mouth of the T Rex and trying to fix it, and then they can automatically clamp on you. No, it's just yeah. a risk. It's, <laughs> it's just a health and safety hazard when you can just like yeah. get a guy, give him a pack of cigarettes, and tell him to fucking animate and make it at home. Like it's just it's a whole scenario. Like where yeah. But I would like to see how much... Pr- the, the best thing is a mixture between CG and practical. The mixture of both is the best. Where you have the CG kind of um, bringing the practical more alive. That's that's yeah. when you get like magic. Yeah, it's just getting that blend right. Yeah. Or you'll, never get, you'll never get perfect CG for a long time, I don't think. And because well, people I, people always like when people saw She Hulk, the TV I show. I haven't seen it yet. But, but saw the model. Yeah. Remember the, the outrage in the model of war. Yeah. And people say, "Oh, this CG is shy. The CG, the CG is not shy. CG is actually world class CG. Mm. It's your eyes. She's so human looking that your eyes are looking at her, and it's the uncanny valley. It's called. Yes. That. Your eyes are like, no, this is not what a human looks like. Because her yes. features are so human. Like, she's she's a, a tall green woman. And you're like, well, women are not green. Like, do you know what I mean? What's, like, wow, well, wow. Well, that's the reason why the Hulk looks great. Because he's out mm. of proportion. He doesn't look human. He's so out of proportion. He's huge mm. shoulders, big square head and all. Do you know what I mean? There's no, mm. like, the proportions are all over the kip. There's no uncanny mm-hmm. valley. He does not look like any person that's ever lived. Mm. The Hulk. She does. She looks like people who lived. And people just determine, oh, well, it looks weird in my eyes. Shite CG. It's not. It's just so... It's actually so good that you think it's a person. And it, your, yeah. your, your brain... Your, brain is, it, your like, brain is fighting. It's like, mm-hmm. well, no, you don't, li- you don't like this. Don't do this. This is, this is horrendous. Stop doing that. That's what it is. Mm. Well... That's that's that with CG. I'm looking at this list for the the rest of the year and there there's a couple of things like I watched season 1 of You and season 1 of You is amazing. It's well, really like, really good. Oh, is that the stalker show? <clears throat> the stalker show and it's it the season 1 was amazing and then they brought out season 2 and I watched season 2 and I was a little bit like 
it doesn't have the same what season one had and by the end of season two and going into season three i think i watched the first episode of season three and i was like i'm out i'm out That's, it oh. it just it lost it for me it just it just I just tried to I be more understand. than what it was. They, you should have been a one and done, a one season and done, in it's my like, opinion. Now, I haven't seen the last two, couple of seasons, so I can't say. But for me, they should have just. It's just it. a, an over. It's a like he's a psycho, and like let me guess, he's a psychopath who stalks you women. No, <laughs> basically. Like what? Basically, and may, he and people, stalks and people are like, oh, and murders. Yeah, like I just don't get. Well, like I don't know. I just don't see the appeal to it. If he wasn't good, if he was horrible looking, that show would fail. For me, it was. It wasn't anything to do with that. Like there were people who were Love, getting attracted that show to him or whatever. Would crash and born if he was not a good looking man. But then it. It for me, it's the how does he do it. How is he doing it? How is he able to get away with that? It was the learning how he was doing things and calculating things to to to, to the other things he does. Like take out the being attracted to him part. Like forget about that part. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about what he did and what steps he took to be able to do the things that he did in the show. That for me is what appealed to me. People getting attracted to him because of how he looks and being like, oh, it'd be fine. That is, you need to go see a doctor. <laughs> it's a different show. You need to go see a doctor. If that's fucking um, Jack Black. Oh, no, that'd be funny. If that's, um, <laughs> let me say, who can I say? If that's fucking. Who no, we don't want to say anybody who is ugly or whatever or is like not attractive or whatever. But if that's I get one, what you're saying. It's horrendous. However, instead of being, that would be a whole different vibe to it, though. If it was someone who was like deemed as being unattractive, who was doing all these things, that's a totally different vibe. That is leaning into more like horror thriller, whereas yeah, this was like he's a different that's he's psychological thriller. Pardon? So sexiness determines if it's a psychological. Uh, <laughs> Well, no, just the How nature and, and the atmosphere so, of... So if Friday the 13th was a sexy man, it'd be a psychological show. Well, yeah, well, look at real life, how they're happy. Joking, Ted joking. Bundy. Yeah, I'm joking. I'm no, a... absolutely, but look at Ted Bundy. Ted Bundy was able to do much of what he did because he was good looking. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. That's just manipulation. Mm. But like with Jason <laughs> Voorhees, it was just a beautiful chat. Go around and killing people. It would be a th <laughs> doesn't say anything. Just like just looks at me. Just just gives you that face. <laughs> You're just like, oh, I love Jason. He's like, I, I love mean, my mother. <laughs> there are some people out there. Yeah, I'll trust me. Just yeah, let's not get into that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's but a that, whole different fucking story. That kind of wraps up what is coming out in 2024. Yes. That has our our eye. We've got, Her eye balls, we've got games. Games, anime. We've got games, anime, manga, TV shows, we got movies. Beans, you, potatoes, name potatoes, potatoes. you name it. You name it. You name it. We are getting fed again this yeah, year. And I just can't wait for the memes. I hope there's, I hope there's good memes this year. Good memes. Good memes. Um, I love a good meme. I don't love a good meme. Love a good meme. I love a fucker. Oh, yes. All right. Um, do you want to do anything else or do we finish up? Let me. Um, let's finish up for today. We'll go and do our reacts. We'll start doing some reacts to some of the trailers, some of the things that we mentioned in today's podcast, okay. um, as well as maybe some bonus content. And uh, we'll see you next week. We'll wrap up the week and we'll uh, see you for next week. Bye. Thank you very much for coming Thanks and hanging out and watching us. I have been Thistle. And I have been the Shamrock. Thank you very much, you guys. Bye. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Just subscribe. Fuck the like and comment. Just subscribe. <laughs> get, get them numbers up, baby. Please. <laughs>